Good morning, welcome to Sunday School. We popped into church this week to do a few old shops, so we thought we'd record some of our Sunday School while we were here. You might recognise the room we're in. Hopefully we'll be back in here very soon with all of you as well. So we're looking at something new for the next couple of weeks in Sunday School. I wonder if any of you have learned something new recently. Maybe you've learned a new skill, like riding a bike, or maybe you've learned a fascinating new fact at school. At my elder son's school, each class has taken a country from the Euro football tournament to learn about, and his class have got Finland, so we've come home with loads and loads of facts about Finland. For example, did you know that Finland is about one and a half times bigger than the United Kingdom? I didn't know that. But there's only about six million people living in Finland, and yet there's over 60 million in the United Kingdom. That's something new that I've learned this week. Mm, interesting. So I wonder how we learn new things. There's lots of different ways that we can learn new things, isn't there? So let's have a lot to think about how we learn different things. We can learn something new when somebody tells us. Yeah. So my son told me facts about Finland that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I guess we can read them in books or find out about new things on the internet. Yep. Yeah. You could watch a video. If I have to do anything new cooking-wise, I have to try and watch a video about how to do things first. You can listen to your teacher, listen to someone telling you about what to do. Yep. Yeah. Um, and a scientist wants to find something out, they can always do an experiment mm. to see what happens. So there are three main ways really that we learn something new. We learn something new by seeing, by hearing and by doing. So think about when you learn to how to ride a bike. You need to look at each part of the bike so you know where the pedals are and the brakes are and how to use it. You might listen to an adult tell you how to get on the bike, how to use the pedal, how to use the brakes. But to really ride the bike you have to get on it and you have to do it for yourself. So we should learn more about Jesus too. We can listen, we can look, and we can do as we learn about him as well. A new way to see. Of all the people who kept the rules, Saul was the best. I'm good at being good, he'd tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He travelled around looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer, and he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus. So, one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul was on his way to Damascus, when suddenly a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice. Why are you fighting me? Lord, answered Saul. Who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you are hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said. I'll tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His helpers had to hold his hand and lead him like a little child. Saul was blind for three whole days, and yet it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there was a man called Ananias, who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him, and I will make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus' followers. Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I have chosen to tell the whole world who I am. So Ananias went to Saul. Brother Saul... Ananias said. It was Jesus you met on the road, and Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly Saul could see again, but he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, the very opposite of proud. And do you know what Ananias' name means? The Lord is full of grace. Grace is just another word for gift, which is funny because that's just what Paul's message was all about from then on. It's not about keeping rules, Paul told people. You don't have to be good at being good for God to love you. You just have to believe what Jesus has done and follow him. Because it's not about trying, it's about trusting. It's not about rules, it's about grace. God's free gift that cost him everything. What had happened to Paul? He met Jesus. Paul got a new job. He called himself a servant and travelled everywhere telling everyone about Jesus. He got shipwrecked three times. He even ended up in prison. God loves us, he wrote from prison. Nothing can ever, no, not ever, separate us from the never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever, love of God he showed us in Jesus. And so it was, just as God promised Abraham that dark night all those years before, the family of God's children grew and grew, until one day they would come to number more than even all the stars in the sky. Now for the story. 
we're going to do a little quiz and see how much you can remember. I've got some question words here. Let's see what we can remember about the story. Are you ready? First one. Where? Where was Paul going to? Can you remember? Begins with a D. Paul was going to Damascus. Well done if you remember that one. That was good. Next question word. Why? Why did Paul want to go to Damascus? Can you remember? He was going there to put the followers of Jesus in prison. Luckily, God had another plan. Next one. What? What happened on the way to Damascus? Can you remember from the story? If you said Paul put the followers in prison, mm -mm, not correct this time. Paul met Jesus. Next one. Who? Who did God tell to go and help Paul? Can you remember his name? Not a tricky one. It's not one we hear very often. It's Ananias. If you got that, double thumbs up. That's a brilliant one. Next one. When? When was Paul baptised? As soon as he heard the message? After breakfast? Three years later? As soon as he possibly could. As soon as he understood the message that Ananias brought him. He was baptised straight away. Last one. How? How did Paul's message change? He went to Damascus to put the followers of Jesus in prison, but then he began preaching that Jesus is God's son. He completely changed, so much that he changed his name, didn't he? He was Saul, and now he's Paul. Ananias helped Paul to learn about Jesus, and we should learn about Jesus too. When Paul learned that Jesus is God's son, his job completely changed. Paul had spent his time trying to arrest the followers of Jesus. Now, Paul travelled to different places, telling people all about Jesus and how amazing he was. Lots of people work in our church so that others can learn about Jesus. So we've got a special treat for you today. We've got a special guest to tell you all about how following Jesus makes a difference in what they do. We've asked Pastor Greg if he would come and share a bit with you this morning. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Greg and I'm very glad to be with you today. One question that I was asked is how did I learn about Jesus? Oh, it's such a good question. Maybe you remember in the Bible it talks about a young man named Timothy. And it says that Timothy learned about Jesus from his mother and his grandmother. Well, I learned about Jesus first from my mom and my dad. But also I learned a lot about Jesus by going to Sunday school, just like you're doing right now. It's one of the best places to learn about Jesus. But ultimately, we know Jesus best in the Bible. I was asked also, how has knowing Jesus changed your life? Wow, Jesus has completely changed my life. When I was young, my heart was dead, spiritually dead. I didn't care anything about God. But then God opened up my heart. He gave me new life. And he told me about how Jesus could forgive my sins. Sins are anything that we do that God says not to do or things that we don't do that God tells us we should do. Well, the problem is all of us don't want to obey God. We, we like to live our own way. But when Jesus came into my life, I realized I could be forgiven because my sins would mean... I would have to be separated from God forever unless God could, for, could forgive me. And Jesus changed my life because he was able to take the punishment for my sin so that I could become a friend of God, a child of God. Well, since then, I have grown to know that God can give me power to obey him, give me desires to obey him, give me a love for other people too. And that has made all the difference in my life. Well, how did my life change when I started working at church? Well, a big thing happened. I grew up thinking that church was about having fun and seeing how many friends I could have. And when I started working at a church and serving at a church, I realized church isn't about me. It's not about me having fun. It's about people knowing God. And that's so much better than just having fun. So... When I started working and volunteering, I realized 
that God loves other people and wants them to know him also. And that became my desire too. What's the hardest part of my job? Well, as a pastor, I do a lot of different things. But I think the hardest part is when I talk to somebody who is rebelling against God. They don't want to obey God. They don't want to follow him. They're, they're sinning and they just want to keep on sinning. And so it's really hard to work with them to help them realize that is a bad place to go. But the best part of my job is kind of the opposite of that when people realize that they have been sinning and want to stop. And I get to help them understand that by God's grace, they can start to live a life that will please God. They can start to live a life that will obey God. And I'm excited when people want to do that. And we can work together and pray together and trust that God will change their life. Some people wonder, is there anything a a child or a, a young person can do to help out at church? Oh, yeah. There is so much that even you can do. Probably the most important thing you can do is to pray. Now, sometimes we think prayer doesn't do much. It's not so much about what prayer can do. God wants us to pray. And God always responds to our prayers. Now, sometimes he says, no, I'm not going to do that. Other times he says, wait, I will do that, but not right now. And then there are other times God says, yes, I will answer that request right now. So when you pray, you can do a lot to help people. And that's certainly something that you can do to help me by praying for me that I would love God with all of my heart, my mind, my soul, and my strength. Because when I do that, I can be sure I will help other people to do the same. And you can help other people learn about Jesus. Right now, the best thing you can do is to learn about Jesus yourself. Make sure you know him. Not just know about him, but know him as a friend and as a savior and as a Lord. The best place to learn about Jesus is in the Bible. So know your Bible. And when you know your Bible, when you know Jesus, then you will be able to help other people learn about Jesus too. Well, thanks for letting me be with you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and that God blesses you. Bye. Thank you so much, Greg. That's really helpful to know these things. Thank you. Thank you for showing us that we should learn about Jesus and we should help others to learn about him too. Do you remember some of the different ways we can learn? We talked about at the beginning of the session. We talked about learning by seeing, learning by doing, and learning by hearing. So I wonder what some of the different ways are that you could learn about Jesus this week. If you'd like to learn by seeing, you could watch Sunday School uh, online. You could read the Bible, you could read a book about Jesus. Maybe you could look at pictures of Jesus or stories about him. If you like to learn by hearing, then maybe you could listen to somebody read a Bible story. You could listen to someone teach you about Jesus, listen to some music. If you like to learn by doing, then maybe you could create something like a picture or a collage. You could use that to tell somebody else about Jesus. Maybe you could write a song about Jesus. There's so many different things you could do to suit the way that you like to learn. So there are many different ways we can learn about Jesus this week. We hope that you try some of them. And don't forget, you can watch Sunday School next Sunday as well. Bye for now.